Hello and welcome to Code Pro, your source for clear and effective programming tutorials. Today we're going to be going over some iOS development centered around the table view controller. What is it? Why should you use it? And um, some of the basics about it. Uh, so our learning objectives for today are to figure out how to seed this table view controller with data, how to subclass table view cells with our own custom classes, and then how to create interface builder outlet connections to our custom cell subclass. Uh, and to show you what this is going to look like, here is the finished product. And it's a table view with some rows and not much else, but that's okay for right now. Uh, so go ahead and open Xcode, create a new single view application, and make sure it's the iOS template. Um, we're going to do this tutorial in Swift. You can follow along in Objective-C if you know it or are familiar with it, but we're going to be using Swift uh, for just ease of use. <clears throat> so once your project is uh, set up, go into your code uh, directory over here and uh, notice what we have. We have an app delegate.swift, a storyboard, and a view controller. Uh, we are actually going to remove the view controller and we're going to be replacing it with the table view controller in just a moment. Uh, so to do that, go into your storyboard and select your uh, view controller scene and this hit the delete key to get rid of it. Also go down to your uh, view controller file in, in the code file and go ahead and uh, right click that and delete it, Let's move it to trash. And let's go ahead and add in our table view controller. So let's pop back over to storyboard and go down to your object library in the bottom right. And you might need to type it in, table view controller, and drag that element onto the canvas. And let's just take a, a moment to look at what we're getting out of the box with this thing. So the big advantage of using a table view controller is one, it already comes with the table view, and two, it already comes with a table view cell. If you're going to do this with a view controller, you'd have to do all of that manually, so this is just a little bit easier to use. Um, and we now we need to go and create the source code file to uh, link up to this store or interface builder element. So go back over to your project and right click new file, Swift file, and let's call this table view controller and hit create. And let's go ahead and set this class up. <clears throat> now, uh, we need to import UIKit. UIKit is a Apple a, a API, a set of APIs that contains all of the view controller, table view controller, cell, all of the classes that we're going to be needing uh, for the UI level of our applications. Uh, so after that import has been uh, inserted, go ahead and type class. And I'm going to call this table view controller. And it will derive from UI table view controller. And uh, we'll go ahead and override our viewed load. I'm sorry, uh, we want to call this table view controller. There we go. I'm going to call override viewed load, which is the starting point for this uh, table view controller. And we are all set up here. Now, important, uh, since we uh, added a, uh, a table view controller to our storyboard, there's two things we need to make sure that we don't forget or this is not going to build the way we expect it to. Uh, the first thing is go back and select your, uh, your table view controller scene. Go into the identity inspector and you'll notice that there's a class here. We need to associate our Swift file with this interface builder element. So go ahead and type in table view controller and now we have just linked our Swift file to our interface builder file. Uh, and then we're not done just yet. We need to go to our attribute inspector and we have to make sure that we check is initial view controller. Otherwise, when we start up the, uh, the simulator, we're going to see a black screen and we're not going to know why. Um, so before we go into the coding, there's a few more setup things we need to do in the interface builder. We need to go ahead and create a custom class for the cell. So select your table view cell and you can see that it also has its own class that we can subclass. Uh, and to do this is quite simple. Um, we need to create a new source code file uh, 
to subclass it. So go back to your code directory, right click, new file, new Swift file, and I'm going to call mine custom cell. And create it. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and uh, set up the basics for this. We'll go ahead and import UI kit, which we need for our table view cell classes. And let's go ahead and give this a name, custom cell, which derives from UI table view cell. And now that we have our source code file created, let's pop back over to the storyboard and select our cell, go into our uh, identity inspector and go ahead and change this class to custom cell. So now we have just properly um, linked our code file again to an interface builder element in the storyboard. Now there's one, one thing we need to do for, for cells. You typically need to give them what's called a reuse identifier. Uh, I'm going to call it cell for the name. And the reason is uh, when the table view is trying to find cells, um, it uses the reuse identifier uh, to basically DQ that cell. Um, so you, you, you have to give it a, a reuse identifier or Xcode will complain and tell you that you need to. Um, and so in the storyboard, you set it through the attribute inspector here. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to our table view controller and get working on what we need to do. <clears throat> so the very first step is we need to define a data source for our table view. So I'm going to create a new one, data source equals an array of people, Mary, Alex, Alice, and John. So now that we've set that up, we need to talk a little bit about UI table view uh, data source protocol. So if you command click on UI table view controller, uh, you can actually see um, a lot of the public interface for this class and you notice that there are, there, there are two important things. Uh, there's what's uh, a protocol called UI table view delegate and a protocol called UI table view data source. Now this is the uh, bare bones protocol that we must implement two methods in here or our table view will not work at all. Uh, if you look at these two methods, you'll notice number of rows in section and cell for row at index path. Now they're very important because number of rows in section will define how many rows uh, to return uh, for the table view. And the cell for row is each table view cell for every row. Uh, now every other method in here is marked as optional, so at the very minimum we have to implement these two methods. So let's go back to our, our table view controller and if, you, if you've realized yet since table, UI table view controller already conforms to those protocols we don't need to, which is another benefit of using the UI table view controller instead of using a view controller itself. So let's go ahead and just create a region of code or let's separate out a, a region of code here for our logic, our data source methods. So table view data source. And now let's go ahead and implement those two methods, starting with number of rows in section. And then notice it returns an integer. We're going to return data source, which is our array dot count. So it's going to have just as many rows uh, that are in our array of uh, our data source. Uh, now the second method, cell for row at index path. So for this guy, what we need to do is it's expecting us to return a cell. So quite simple, let uh, custom cell equals table view dot dq reusable cell with identifier. And that identifier is exactly what we set in the storyboard. So if uh, we go back to uh, main storyboard, you'll notice that the identifier I set in the code there will match exactly what we set here, and they need to match. If they don't match, uh, you might have a runtime crash. So let's go ahead and finish our, our logic here. Uh, we need to actually return this custom cell that we are dequeuing, and we need to do one more thing. Uh, we need to create that interface builder outlet connection to our cell. 
because uh, we want to show something uh, on each cell uh, and we can't do that right now. So uh, to do that, let's go into our custom cell file here and let's go ahead and open up the assistant editor. And now we can do a side by side with our storyboard over on the right and our code file on the left. And with the right pane open, go into your object library and get a UI label. And let's go ahead and drag that right onto the cell. And it's a little cramped here, but I think we can do it. And uh, let's go ahead and just close this for the moment and expand this cell, this label I mean. And now we're gonna go ahead and create that interface builder connection we talked about. So hold down the control key and click and hold on the label and drag to our custom cell class and release the mouse. And let's call this cell label. So now we've just created our interface builder connection or an outlet to our code file uh, back to a storyboard UI element. And if you highlight over this little bullet icon there, you can see how it highlights. It's telling us, hey, we have a connection here to this interface builder element, which is cool. And also if you right click on it, you can see that there's a what's called a referencing outlet, uh, our cell label has an active connection uh, to this uh, label in the storyboard, um, which is really useful to know if you're not sure if uh, you've properly connected everything. So now that that's done, <coughs> let's go back to our table view controller and uh, let's go ahead and go into the full editor here and let us custom cell dot cell label dot text equals the data source at index path dot row. And uh, just so we can see some visual changes with the cell, let's change its background color equals UI color dot red. Um, so what did I just do here? I said that every row in the table view that's returned should set its text to one of the items in our data source array. Uh, and then we just change the color. So let's go ahead and build this now and make sure everything is working as expected. <clears throat> and let Xcode take its sweet time and see what we get coming here. Aha, so now you can see we have our four cells. We have each cell colored red and we have completed what we need to do for this tutorial. So. Uh, again, uh, this was designed to cover some of the basics uh, for table view controllers and um, some reasons why you might want to use them. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, please like the video and subscribe for more tutorials, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.